What did the JOLTS report say about the economy? What is Jerome Powell telling Congress? How about a warning? Interest rates on the 30-year mortgage are below 7%. Folks, we got a lot of stuff to talk about today. It is Thursday. This is your daily financial news. Let's get into the JOLTS report first. Again, remember this week we have three, three pieces of job data. First, we had the ADP report, which came in slightly weaker than expected. I think it was around 140,000 actual on an expectation of 150. Then we got the JOLTS report. The JOLTS report really is, for me, job openings. Uh, again, I think it was in December, it might have been November, where it spiked over 9 million and caught us by surprise. Well, expectations were for 8.8 .8 million job openings, came in at actually 8.86 million. So rough and tough, let's call that a push. But again, the job market is slowing down. The big number is tomorrow, I believe at 5.30 a.m., what is coming out. Let's have an over-under. Let's see how we do. Uh, the expectations, I believe, last I checked, were 198,000 jobs created. Do you want to take the over or the under? Remember, the last couple of months, the ADP report has been grossly under-reporting. Does that mean it will continue? Of course not. But it will be interesting and important. I will say it again. If the expectations are 200,000, this is what we are playing for. If it comes in significantly above that expectation, let's call it 225, that is going to send rates higher. If it comes in significantly lower, let's call it 180, it will send rates lower. Tomorrow's number will undoubtedly move the market. So again, it is an important thing to watch tomorrow morning. Uh, on top of that, you know, we are seeing that the mortgage rate, th shout out Resi Club, Lance Lambert, Mortgage Bankers Association, all of them, all of them are highlighting that, you know what? The 30-year mortgage, again, best credit, owner rock, down payment, is once again under seven percent you've heard me over the last couple of weeks almost beg for rates to stay with a seven handle well that did not last long we are still in the throes of spring selling and it's early in much of the country we're going to find out we're going to find out together over the next six to eight weeks assuming rates stay with a six and not a seven if my fear is warranted. We saw some wacky behavior in January and early February. It slowed down noticeably once we spiked to seven. I don't know. I've been studying the consumer a long time. And at this moment, I think it is pretty clear. 7% bad, 6% good. Now I know, I know, I know, I know. 6.97 is not that much different than 7.01. But to a consumer, they look at the first number. It's a six. Oh, by the way, they can buy the rate down and get maybe a six and a half or a six and a quarter. I am nervous. I do not want to see the housing market rip five, seven, ten percent. That is not what I want. I want a healthy housing market. And for that, we need time. We need inventory to build. We need, we need dumps to be sold cheap. We, we can't have everybody competing over scraps. So we shall see. Again, tomorrow's number clearly could send rates back over seven. So I will withhold judgment until tomorrow and see where we are and see if the trend is confirmed and sub seven is where we're going. We've already heard from uh, Beth Traverso up in Seattle, AKA King County, about a wild price increase month on month. I think it was 14%. I think that was year on year, 14%. I heard from an Austin real estate agent who you were here from today, Danielle, uh, at 12, there's a 
full breakdown of Austin real estate. Thank you, Danielle, for being a part of the channel. I love how data focused you are. But we got Las Vegas, Brian Lebo. Brian Lebo once again giving us the facts about February housing in Las Vegas. Right now, I think we are scheduled to talk on Tuesday of next week. But what happened in Las Vegas, Nevada? Remember in Las Vegas last month, January, prices went down like five or 8,000 bucks. Did the, did the price crash continue? Nope. In fact, prices in Las Vegas ripped higher. In a single month, median home price rose 15 grand. Can't make this stuff up, folks. It is becoming painfully clear to me that we should be watching inventory. You should be watching inventory in your metro, in your buy box. Inventory in Las Vegas month to month went down 10 properties, 10 units from uh, January to February, so 10. Where we are seeing pain is where inventory is at or above 2019 levels. It is very simple. What part of the country is seeing inventory above 2019? Well, look no further than Southwest Florida. Southwest Florida, number one city with the inventory above is Punta Garda, Florida. I'm probably mispronouncing that badly, I apologize. It is up 151% year on year, but most importantly, up 34% on 2019. Folks, it is not hard to find stress. Where you want to find stress, i.e. prices going down, look at active inventory. Much of the country, dare I say, I think Lance Lambert would know this. I'm just going to guess. I'm going to guess 90% of the country is under, significantly under 2019 levels. Man, if we are under 2019 by a wide margin and rates have a six handle, that is why I am nervous. To, again, I do not want to see prices rip higher. Alrighty, folks, let's switch gears to office. Got an interesting office report that was kind of eye-opening. We have a couple of metrics around price per square foot and vacancy. Uh, price per square foot in San Francisco down 28.6%. Think about that. Let's call it 30% for easy math. You used to rent a square foot in San Francisco office for, I don't know, a thousand bucks. Now it's 700. There are some big value drops in San Francisco. Just so you know, the U.S. Uh, average drop in office is 7.7%. So yes, again, if you are playing in the office sector, you have seen uh, your NOI, your net operating income, take significant hit because your top line revenue number is falling. And oh, by the way, your vacancies are up, your costs are up. So yeah, values are dropping. Office vacancies. This is very interesting when you look at it over time. So 2019, San Francisco, California, office vacancy 5.2%. Fast forward to December of 2023, office vacancy 24.6. Ouch. What this tells me, quite frankly, is there's going to be a lot of extend and pretend with office in San Francisco. If you just do the math on valuations, it is very clear that values could be down 50, 60, dare I say 70% against actuals. Again, just so you have the US average by comparison. In 2019, office vacancy in the US was 12.7%. So roughly double San Francisco. Now, if you fast forward to 2023, the US average is 18.9, let's call it 19%. So San Francisco is ahead and leading in office vacancies. Uh, let's talk about weekly claims. Again, you and I weekly get to look at it Thursday morning. What is going on with jobless claims? It is our most accurate and up-to-date metric of what is happening right now. Uh, last week, just so we remember, was 217. Expectations were 215. So expectations down a couple of grand. 
actual 217. So a couple of things. That's two weeks in a row, two weeks in a row, where actuals were ahead of expectation. You can call that a trend loosely. Although these numbers are still in the bottom half or the bottom fourth of 200, right? So we're still very low. We're not gonna get concerned if we, until we spike to 300, really more like 325, but there we go. We did get some no notice from Reuters. Reuters did a summary about job losses or layoffs. Uh, the layoffs in February rose 3% from January and was the highest reading in 11 months. The tech sector had did take the brunt of layoff announcements. We did get some earnings announcements really in the retail segment. Uh, we got Victoria's Secret, uh, weak sales guidance. Their turnaround is not turning around. Hugo Boss, kind of affordable luxury in clothing, gave a weak sales guidance as well. We are getting data from Germany factory orders. There's just it feels like the world is slowing down, really slowing down ex India. I think I read a report the other day that India's GDP was like 8% last quarter, something wild like that. So GD, you know, GDP seems to be slowing down ex India, uh, but yes, lots going on there. Now let's talk about Jerome Powell. Jerome Powell had his first day in front of Congress. He will undoubtedly, he's doing it again today. I essentially expect him to have a rough day. What do I mean by that? We have to remember that Congress is made up of Republicans and Democrats. Republicans and Democrats are looking at Jerome Powell as a pivotal component in the election. We are in an election year. That is not a surprise to anyone. It also appears that the election will be a repeat of last year with Biden and Trump on the ticket to see who will get the next four years. So the Republicans are basically saying, don't cut rates at the end of the year to impact the election. The Democrats are saying the economy is slowing down, prices are too high, cut now. This has to be an uncomfortable position. Jerome Powell has addressed this head on and I expect him to do it again. He is going to come in and talk about, we are agnostic, we're not politically affiliated. And as I have said before, Jerome Powell is already rich. He is like Richie Rich. Also, Jerome Powell, in my opinion, has zero, zero interest in being renominated. That gives him power. When you are looking at running out the clock, which I think is like five quarters, I think it's a little bit over a year left in his term, he doesn't give a rat's butt about who the president is, who's in Congress, he is doing his job. I believe Jerome Powell is playing for his legacy and his legacy only. Again, if you're playing out your contract, you have no interest in being reelected. You are already Richie Rich. You are playing for your legacy. What does that mean for you and I? I believe Jerome Powell would like to go down as close to Paul Volcker as he can. He doesn't want to be the guy that let inflation come back like Arthur Burns. I believe, in my opinion, that Jerome Powell will cut in July. If not July, it will be December. I do not believe Jerome Powell wants to be the guy that cuts rates in September. It's just my belief. We'll see. We'll see, right? So I believe the first rate cut will come in July or it will come in December. It is my opinion. You are free to disagree with that, but that is what I think is coming. Don't know if you are following New York Community Bank Corp, but it has been on a wild ride the last couple of days. It had crashed to under two bucks uh, on word that they were having to go out and raise funding. Bingo Bango, they raised a billion dollars uh, from folks like Steve M M Muchin, Muchin? Eh, whatever. And uh, looks like they are back to healing themselves, but we shall see. It is going to be hard for community banks who are over indexed on local real estate. New York Bank, uh, New York Bank Corp, New York Community Bank Corp, excuse me, um, was over indexed on uh, affordable housing in New York 
and got got with bad debt, lower NOIs, and frankly, unprofitable buildings. So folks, lots and lots of stuff going on. Uh, I hope you have an amazing day. Thank you for being a part of One Rental at a Time. It means the world to me that we have almost 100 of you watching live uh, this morning. I will not acknowledge 18 of you. 18 of you have hit the thumbs up. So hopefully we can get the thumbs up going. I appreciate you. Have a wonderful day. Take care of yourself. Later.